Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. We have made it. It is the weekend, and here we are with a bonus video, y'all. I just want to take a moment to thank you because this has been a ton of coverage throughout this showcase week, and from top to bottom, I'm really proud. We did it. We did Avowed, Starfield, the in depth analysis, the Avowed news, the showcase reactions. We did it all. I did it all without killing myself. That was thanks to my editing team. Shout out to Paul. Shout out to Lockmore. Both of them came up huge this week in making it possible to do all this coverage for all of you. And shout out to all of you who sat down, watched these videos. We've seen engagement and traffic unlike I've seen in years. And I just feel very grateful. So thank you for being a part of this because I know it's been a really exciting week for video games and there's so much to talk about. And of course, there are many other talented creators with plenty of exciting, interesting thoughts to share but you've chosen to spend some of your time here with me on all these various games we've talked about. So just again, before I get started on today's video, as we wrap up the showcase coverage, thank you. I appreciate you immensely. And now I'm gonna talk about a studio I appreciate immensely in In Exile Entertainment. We're gonna put some respect on their name today, y'all, right? It's time for people to stop sleeping on one of the greatest RPG developers in our industry. Because today we're talking about the last of the RPGs from the Xbox Showcase I really wanted to talk about. We lined them up, we knocked them down, Starfield got a lot of love, Avowed got a lot of love. Now we're talking about In Exile's Clockwork Revolution, which was really the showcase conclusion, right? You had the Xbox Series S one terabyte SKU show up afterwards, and then we transitioned to the Starfield Direct. So technically it wasn't that, but in my head canon, it was the just one more thing of the showcase. I don't know why they went out of order, maybe to kind of give some breathing room from Clockwork Revolution into Starfield, but I digress. I wanted to get into the nitty gritty of the information around this game on both Brian Fargo's Twitter account and the Xbox Wire, and just share some thoughts on this because not only does it look fantastic, but y'all should be excited about this one because it looks fire and it's from a team of developers that love role-playing games. I'm gonna showcase why. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here, you're into Xbox news, information, conversation, discussions on all their exclusives. We're going through them all. Consider subscribing and with that, let's begin at the top. What exactly is Clockwork Revolution? We get this nice shiny trailer. It's like, okay, this looks great. It's like Bioshock, but it's also like Singularity in a way. So yeah, it's a first person shooter probably, right? That's it. Okay, cool. In Exile just going out of their usual pocket. No. No, Brian Fargo, studio head at NXIL Entertainment, is here to write the record. He writes on his Twitter account that Clockwork Revolution is a deep RPG. Full character creation is included. Branching dialogue system will be here. An awesome set of steampunk weapons and dark humor will be here. That last part, extremely important if you're into what NXIL has done before. He also follows it up saying, it's important to know that Clockwork Revolution is a true RPG with all the stats, crunchy details, and deep reactivity that we are known for. And he also states something that I've reported here on the channel before, and that's been reported in the past via job listings. This game will be made using Unreal Engine 5, hence why it's coming in due time, according to the end of the trailer. So there's a lot to get into with this, from the branching story choices to the deep RPG mechanics. I know for a lot of people, that's lip service. But look, for those who don't know Brian Fargo, one of the fathers of Fallout, went on to create the Wasteland series, which gave birth to Fallout, and Wasteland's gonna be a major talking point here. Why should you bite onto and hold on to every single word here that our man Brian Fargo is saying? I got one game for you, Wasteland 3. This is one of the best role-playing games of all time, and easily a top RPG, if not the best RPG of the last generation. On just a complete recommendation side of things, it's a co-op RPG at that, but doesn't sacrifice any of the choice-driven nature of it, so you can play with a friend and have an absolute blast. But Wasteland 3 is the best selling point I can give you for Clockwork Revolution because it is a deeply reactive role playing game that has so many spider webbing choices, it's gonna make your head spin. As a game developer now, it makes my head spin even more that there's a team of people that had this many permutations of the things happening. Now, typically in a lot of games, I'll throw out a good example 
as the base version. I don't know what's gonna change with Phantom Liberty, but I always called out Cyberpunk 2077 for all it did right with its gameplay role playing, its choices and its story by the end was very much smoke and mirrors, illusions, which many RPGs do. Just give you the feeling of making a choice because yeah, that's all you need for some developers. Uh, but I think In Exile Entertainment takes it a mile deeper. And so it's not just, oh, that's cool. That thing happened, I think. In Exile makes sure you feel it now and in the future. You have characters circle and back that you screwed over. You've got characters that are coming to you with deep, meaningful, moral-based choices with rewards packed into each of these routes that are super unique. Quests are gonna get cut off because of choices that you made. It's all about choice in Wasteland 3. And especially for those of you, and I know there are many of you out there who are interested in Fallout because we talk about Fallout a lot here. Uh, yeah, if you like Fallout, you're gonna love Wasteland 3. Wasteland 3 <laughs> literally is a Fallout game because it gave birth to Fallout. And that's the game that if you play, even if you don't like isometric RPGs, it's very snappy for what it is. Trust me, like your turn is up in a snap. So you're not wasting much time. So. It's one of those games that when you play, you will be totally sold on the premise of Clockwork Revolution strictly because of the role-playing game mechanics. And now they're doing a AAA first-person shooting RPG with deep reactivity that they're known for. That is exciting. But we have more details on the actual game itself that we can sink our teeth into and share some thoughts on. So let's head on over to the Xbox Wire, read some more, and then I'll share some additional thoughts. Let's start off with the setting and the story. Clockwork Revolution takes place in the vibrant Victorian era metropolis of Avalon, where steam trains fly overhead. Wealthy industrialists replace their limbs with ornate clockwork prosthetics and mechanical servants fulfill their masters every whim. But this new age of wonders holds a dark secret. It's been carefully constructed by the ruthless Lady Ironwood through use of a time travel device. She's changed key moments in Avalon's history, keeping the working class struggling in the slums and factories while bringing herself immense wealth and power. That is where you come in. They break down the time travel afterwards. Time travel and the chronometer. Discovering Ironwood's scheme, you'll use a wondrous device known as the chronometer to travel back in time. Choose how to influence the past and then return to the present to experience the effects of your decision. Through unprecedented and complex visual and narrative depth, the choices you make on your trips into the past will change the people, the stories, and the city of Avalon itself in extraordinary and very often unexpected ways. In Clockwork Revolution, we're pushing role-playing reactivity to new heights infused with the unique texture and personality that you've come to expect from our games. Let's pause there time travel RPG where you go to the past, you make choices and they impact the future. That's super ambitious. It also reminds me, and I'm only thinking of this because I made a retro rebound on, on it recently for this new Spider-Verse movie that came out. It reminds me of Edge of Time where the main villain goes back in time and establishes their business very early and then they start to just completely take over the future. And so you have to reverse all of that because it's going to destroy everybody. You know how it all goes in these superhero games. So. It reminds me a lot of that, but the idea that you can be at the center of it and traveling back in time and making choices that change the future is extremely exciting and extremely ambitious. And ambition is key here because based off what you've already seen with Wasteland 3 and now what you've seen with Clockwork Revolution, one of the reasons I'm very excited about Clockwork Revolution is I view it as punching up. I've always looked at In Exile Entertainment as a fantastic developer, one of the most underappreciated. But like I said at the start of this all, this is about putting respect on their name because not enough people have given them the love. Not a lot of people were talking about heading into this showcase. Hey, you know, what is In Exile up to, right? Like, what is this Project Cobalt? A lot of people were snoozing on them and it's why with this game, they're gonna punch above their weight. I mean, when you see the type of games they've made before and even Bard's Tale, which is great, these are not first person shooting action RPGs. So when I look at something like this, that's doing that on top of the role playing, on top of the choice and consequence, it's a lot here to be ecstatic about. But also keep in mind, when they said coming in due time at the end of the trailer, this wasn't just lip service. There was a letter shared on an Exiles website that said that this was pre-alpha gameplay. What that means 
is we're very early in development right now. What they have is pretty much a pitch slice that they could show you and say, this is representative of what the game is and they build out from there. Once you're in the alpha state, you should be playable from start to finish. Once you get into beta, it's a lot of bug testing, refining. So this is probably a 2025 game. I don't anticipate hearing much about it, but I think it was okay to close the show with this because it was a look deeper into the future where I feel like things such as even South of Midnight or Fable are far closer. And I would even wager that Fable could be closer than South of Midnight, we'll see about all of that but i anticipate that clockwork revolution is still a ways away based off the fact that what we saw was pre-alpha now continuing on there's still a little bit more that we can peer into here they write in conclusion on the xbox wire post this is an exciting project for us at in exile not only is clockwork revolution our first fully fledged xbox game studios release but from start to finish we're utilizing the resources and support of microsoft and xbox to create our studios first triple a first person action rpg we're still early in development but hope you enjoyed this pre-alpha sneak peek and we look forward to sharing more in due time and i wonder with you know the focus on time in this game if that's just kind of a a little play on words there wouldn't surprise me if in exiles being a little cheeky there but when you take a look at the notes here look i don't want to go full fanboy but i kind of had this week so whatever uh, this is why people were really excited about companies being bought by Xbox. I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but this is why, okay? Obviously, what matters is when the product's delivered, but we're seeing the promises, right? We're seeing the potential. And when you look at something like Wasteland 3, you know, this is a game that's fantastic, but you can tell it's made on a smaller budget. Not every game needs to be a big budget smash hit, and I hope that Exile still has that second team working on something in the Wasteland engine. There's too much potential there to spoil it on all Clockwork Revolution. But point being is we're seeing a company, as I mentioned earlier, really reach for the stars, not just Starfield, but really reach for the stars and do something that they previously couldn't do. This is not the league we're in previously where we were talking about, oh, Psychonauts 2, it got an extra boss fight and some extra time. Yeah, boss fights in Psychonauts 2, which were great, by the way, and helped make the game, and obviously the polish did too, because it was phenomenal. But this is the impact from Xbox we've been looking for when it comes to teams they've bought that start their project from the ground up. What's that gonna be? And how is it gonna put the studio on the map? And no doubt, In Exile has always been fantastic, but more people are about to learn about them. So I just wanted to, of course, champion some Wasteland 3, but champion what we've learned about this game thus far. And again, I anticipate we're gonna get very little information out of this game for some time. And when they start showing more, I will be all over it. But that's all I got for you today in conclusion of our showcase week coverage. Next time we come around, I'm planning to talk about some Cyberpunk 2077. So we'll get all into the thick of that. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again for tuning in. I appreciate you immensely. Looking forward to seeing your thoughts on Clockwork Revolution in the comments down below. With that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.